So earlier on, we uh, made an atom, um, a lithium atom, and we made the nucleus, um, and then we added the two electrons. Well, we had to have three electrons altogether, so we had to have two in the first shell and then one in the second shell because the first shell can only hold two and the second one can hold up to eight, and so can the third, in fact. So then what we did is we introduced electronic structure. Now, electronic structure is simply a way of not having to draw the shells, but just writing um, using this system to say how many is in the first shell, how many is in the second shell, how many is in the third, and so on. Lithium had two in the first shell, one in the second shell. So the electronic structure is two, one. We then looked at the, the other atoms on the periodic table, some other atoms on the periodic table, and we uh, just simply looked at the atomic number and we thought, well, that's how many protons it's got. So that will be how many a neutral atom will have of electrons. So beryllium's got four electrons, so it would have two in the first shell and the other two must go into the third, into the second shell, sorry. Two in the first and two in the second. Then boron, two, three. Then we went down to sodium, and that's got 11, 2, 8, that one's full, and so the third one must go there, and then magnesium, 2, 8, 2. So that's the electronic structure. Now, the observation that we made was that um, all the ones that were in the first group, we, we call this a group, the column is called the group, and they all had, if we look at the two that we've got, lithium and sodium, they both had one in the outer shell. And then we notice that um, lithium, boron, lithium, beryllium, and boron, they're all in the second row. They all had two shells. Sodium and magnesium is in the third row. It had three shells. So in other words, the row tells you the amount of shells it's going to have, and the column tells you the amount of, um, amount of electrons in the outer shell. So the, the column we call the group, which is the number of electrons in the outer shell. It will tell you the number of electrons in the outer shell. And the row, we actually call the period, which is why the, it's called periodic table. So the period, the row, tells you the amount of shells in total it's got. Now, what's even cooler, you can actually look at this periodic table and you'll notice it actually makes sense. For a start, this hydrogen shouldn't be there. It should actually be over here. The reason why they do it on GCSE periodic tables is because actually hydrogen is not a metal and it confuses people because you might have drawn a zigzag that goes around about here that says non-metals over here, metals over here. Then you go, and hang on a second, hydrogen's not a metal. What are you talking about? That's over there. So they go, okay, fine, let's just put it in the middle to stop confusing people. But it's, maybe it can cause more confusion because it shouldn't go there. It doesn't float in the middle like that. That's ridiculous. It goes over here. So... So they got hydrogen should be over here. And if we look, we have on the top row, we have two elements. Because when you think about it, you're putting the first, first element, the simplest element, hydrogen, will have the electronic structure will just be one. The second most simple atom will be, the electronic structure will be two. Now we've filled the shell and we've finished the row. So we need a new shell and we need a new row. So when we go to the new row, we need to add our first electron to that new row. And that's why the first column has got one electron because we've just started filling the new row. When we go to the next one in that row, we'll add in the second electron, hence the second group. So that's why the row or the period tells you the number of total shells and the group tells you the number of shells, sorry, the number of electrons in the outer shell.